Hey everyone! This week I've got a project for all of our friends that are missing their clay classes. I've got a recipe for a clay alternative that you can make at home and create some neat projects. Let's give it a try! Today we're going to need a mixing bowl. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using your favorite bowls or utensils for this project, but it does wash out as long as you get to it quickly. Uh, two parts of cornstarch. So I used cup measurements. So this is two cups of cornstarch. Um, it makes plenty of clay, I'd say, for two kids to do multiple projects. Um, so you, if you just have one child, you could probably do half this. And then uh, one part, or in my case, one cup of Elmer's white glue. Uh, you're going to need a stirring utensil. Uh, this whisk worked pretty well. Again, um, I wouldn't use your favorite whisk, but uh, it worked to get everything mixed together, and then I just washed it right away and everything came off. So you're going to start mixing the cornstarch in the glue and monitor the consistency of the material. So as I'm mixing, if it gets too clumpy and flaky, which you're kind of seeing here, uh, we're going to need to add more glue. If it gets too sticky, we're going to need to add some more cornstarch. So you can see there, it's still pretty flaky. It's not coming together into a dough. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more glue. And keep mixing. You'll know it's ready when it starts um, getting stuck into your whisk. If you're using a whisk, it'll start to clump up in there and then you're getting pretty close. So you can see that's happening here. So I'm gonna add a little more glue here to get the rest of it to the right consistency and then we should be good to go. One thing I'll add is that if you would like, at this point you could also add food coloring or you could wait till the dough is uh, completely ready and then you could split it into multiple balls and add food coloring to each ball of dough so you have a couple different colors to work with. Um, I didn't have any food coloring, uh, so I didn't do that. I'm also planning on painting the project at the end, so I didn't think I needed colored clay, um, but feel free to do that and experiment with that if you'd like to. So when it all seems to be about the right consistency, I started folding my clay together kind of like you would with bread dough. Um, and you can take any extra bits off your hands and the side of the bowl uh, and try to fold it in so it gets to be uh, nice and even all the way through. And then you can start um, using the palms of your hands to shape it into a ball. And it does come out a pretty nice consistency, uh, almost looks like porcelain. And this is a good time to pause, wash your bowl and your utensils, and let the clay rest for a minute. Uh, the clay does stick to surfaces, so uh, I would put it on a piece of wax paper or parchment paper while you're doing some cleanup. I'm going to break my clay in half and just work with one half. As I mentioned, the um, two cups cornstarch to one cup glue ratio does yield a pretty good amount. So I'm just going to work with one half to begin with. And I'm going to put it on the parchment paper and then fold the parchment paper over it. And grab a rolling pin and roll it flat between the two sheets. Um, the parchment paper just works to protect your table and your rolling pin from getting the clay all over it. Um, but you know, you could do it without if you want. Um, you'll notice at the beginning of this video, I didn't mention every single material or tool we're going to be using because really at this point, once you have the clay made, um, you can take it in any direction you want. I do think that this clay is most successful when you're working flat, like I'm going to do today. Uh, but you could certainly uh, hand sculpt some things with it. Um, I will advise that if your children have taken clay classes with us and they've done uh, slipping and scoring and things like that with real clay, uh, this is not going to work so well with that. So you either want to work flat or I would say sculpt from one ball. You don't want to be attaching things uh, to a form because they're not going to stick together like real clay does. 
For flat work, you want your clay to be between an eighth and a quarter inch thick, and then you can start working on it. So with our flat clay, uh, we're gonna cut some shapes out of it. And these can be used like ornaments or little plaques. Um, one thing that works great for this is cookie cutters, but I am not a baker, so I didn't have any cookie cutters around. Um, I'm using a ball canning lid, and that works well. Um, or you could use, you know, anything else you find around the house that you can trace with like a butter knife. Uh, we'll cut it out of this clay just fine. Um, so use what you have um, and get some different shapes cut out. And any of the scraps you have left over, like these here, I just rolled up into a ball. And then I formed into a little heart shape that actually came out pretty cute. You'll see that later. But when everything's done, you're going to want to let it dry overnight. And I actually found it worked well if you flipped it once. Um, the side that is on the wax paper or the parchment paper doesn't dry as quickly. So I flipped it once and um, each side probably dried for like eight hours before it was ready to work on again. Okay, so now for another fun part. We're gonna figure out some different ways to paint or color our clay. I'm gonna start with watercolor because I think it's something that a lot of families will have at home and it's also really versatile. I love how it can blend together and create really pretty pastel colors and it works great on this clay. Um, so in some situations, I'm going to, um, you know, just paint my project and that'll be it. Um, some other situations, I'll paint kind of like a background and then we can go back on top of it with some darker acrylic paints um, if you have them. But it's really up to you and how you want to uh, finish up these projects. Um, so this heart, I'm just making some pastel colors. Stamps are a great thing to bring into this project if you have them. You can see on this little pendant, I uh, stamped a pattern into it before I let it dry. And the stamps come out really great with watercolors. So as I paint the watercolors on here, you'll see uh, they kind of pool and get darker where the impressions of the stamp were. And then uh, stay pastel and lighter on the top surface. Um, so that's a really neat effect, and I will probably leave this one just like that because I like how it looks. If you notice your watercolor is getting darker in certain spots and you want them to be lighter, you're just going to add some more water, and that'll lighten them right up. So I'm going to let this one dry too. And then, let's see, on this big flat one, I think I'm going to paint a little picture, maybe a, a scene. I'll put the sky in blue on top, and then maybe a little landscape. So um, I'm going to use the pastels to create kind of a loose landscape, and then at the end, if we want, we can go back in with acrylic paint and tighten it up a little bit. You'll notice just like with the stamp, uh, the watercolors will fill in all the cracks in your clay, which I think is kind of a cool effect. Um, so you can try to work with it as you're painting. And then on this last one, um, I think I'm going to go with a rainbow. Um, if you're working with little kids, it's great to talk about the rainbow and how colors blend into each other. Watercolors are a great tool for demonstrating that because they'll kind of naturally bleed one into the other. So if you're going through the rainbow, you're going to do red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. The watercolors will take a couple hours to dry. And then if you'd like, you can go back in with acrylic paints. Acrylic paints are a little uh, denser and bolder so they'll stand out against the watercolors uh, you can see I made my heart for mom it is Mother's Day this weekend so happy Mother's Day to all the why moms out there um, if you do this project with your kiddos I hope you enjoy and I hope you reach out if you have any questions or to share photos of your results thanks so much and see you next week